I'm joined by uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan is, uh, let's see, an actor. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ryan, this is a, a long time coming. I know you're a big TCM fan. Thank you for, Huge for, for TCM fan. turning up for us. I My it. God, I, this is, I, don't, I was ner I'm, ner I'm not normally nervous about doing uh, interviews, but to show up on TCM, which is on, I make no, this is not an exaggeration, it is on, on in my home 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it's sort of my digital comfort blanket in a weird way. And it's kind of become that way for my kids. Some of the movies I'm sure are damaging them, <laughs> but no worse than I am. That's right. So, you know. You program two films. Yes, sir. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. First, John Hughes picture of 1987, Steve Martin, John Candy. And then after that, we'll have Gross Point Blank. You're not merely a guest programmer. I want to make sure I get this right. You're also a, uh, you're the guest curator oh, at God. the TCM uh, Julian's auction. That's going to be at Comic-Con uh, at the end of July. And, and your character for your, your new film, uh, Deadpool, is, uh, I guess you've, 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 you're contributing some of that uh, material to the auction. So, so happy to do it. Yeah. Also, it's, I think it's an opportunity to like really bridge, uh, create a little bit of a bridge for, um, you know, I, I do a lot of like, you know, uh, speaking events where I'm talking a bit about my career and in, in, in the business side of things and also my career in the, in the show business. Are people side. interested in your career? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. you know, huh. sometimes I've, sometimes huh. they're very good at act, better at acting than I am. Uh, so uh, they seem quite attentive. But the, the, the one thing I think is really important is that people ask, like, how do you, you know, approach some of this stuff? What's the best kind of uh, method or mode for me to enter this business, show business? Young people really want to be a part of this. And I think, um, for me, it's, it's, I never took proper acting classes. I know some viewers right now are nodding in agreement, <laughs> but I also, uh, you know, I spent my, my early days in improv, which I felt like taught me um, as much, if not more, than any acting class I ever could have. And the other thing is TCM really did give me a sort of a scope and some uh, encyclopedic library in my mind of not just narratives and, and performances, but also shots. And um, if I'm somebody who's, 19 to 25, 26 right now, um, my advice would be turn TCM on and leave it on and just let it wash over you. Don't worry right. about sitting there and going, okay, what is this movie and how do I break it down and why is this good? Why is this bad? Just let it wash over yeah, you. Yeah, not whether this is realistic, right? Just, just no, right, yeah. take in the manner in which yeah. stories were told. Because you guys show bad movies sometimes. Like That's you right. get to see, also, yeah. you see great actors. In terrible movies right, sometimes, right. and you sometimes see terrible actors in a great movie. It's right, like, elevating it. Yeah, yeah it's right. wild. Uh, so uh, well, we're going to start with planes, trains, and automobiles Please, uh, yeah. from Paramount in '87. Uh, what what uh, drew you to this movie uh, then, and what draws you to it now? I've always been a bit of an obsessive over John Candy, and certainly Steve Martin as well. Um, You're from another land. Yes, um, from the, uh, the, the Canada. Canada, yeah. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is, I think, north of us. It um, is north of us. And John Candy, I imagine, for Canadian actors of your generation and generations to follow, is fairly revered. Yes. What Candy does in Planes, Trains is that he gives us this glimpse into his vulnerability and his humanity that you don't see in as many other films of his and how these kind of maladaptive coping mechanisms that we use to sort of avoid life's harsher truths or, or emotional pain that we're, we're going through, how those kind of act as a sort of a bomb and help us get from one place to another. And his maladaptive coping mechanism in that, in that movie is that he's like this incredibly clingy, in Steve Martin's eyes at least, Neil Page character, uh, annoying, Right. Ass clown who just keeps showing up everywhere he goes. You kind of get to see why he does that. And I find it incredibly moving and heartbreaking. I try to put something from planes, trains in almost everything I do. I mean, if you see Deadpool uh, 1, Deadpool 2, certainly Deadpool and Wolverine, which, which is now coming out, there's a nod to John Candy and or planes, trains in every single one of those movies. Every time I license the book that Candy's holding that's called Canadian Mounted, mm -hmm. where he's reading it in the airport, Every time I have to call Paramount and give them $5,000 and I get to take the book and I get to put it on camera in, bury it somewhere in, in, in Deadpool. But there's also um, a lot of the writing is inspired um, by that odd couple pairing, which I think is really beautiful. Well, take a look at the movie. It, it, it's, it's a road trip film with these two guys. And, and, and you're, Steve Martin seems like the more important character, but I, I think the more times I see it, this, is, this movie's really about John Candy and Steve Martin is us. Yes. Steve Martin is the recognition of what's happening to Candy yeah, throughout the film. He, he acts as the audience. Yes. So, and that's something that I steal from Steve Martin all the time, which is sit in the movie theater 
while you're making the movie. And I feel like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, as well as the other one I'm going to program in this movie, are, are movies that I, I suspect now at 47 years old that I could look back and know that those are movies that the filmmakers really listened to the movie. Because if you listen to your movie while you're making it, it will not only speak to you, it'll yell at you. And, and if you stick only to, stick super close to just the script and the shot list, you can lose your footing really, really quickly. So these are movies that I, I think really had filmmakers that, and I say filmmakers in, a, in the plural because it's, yes, it's John Hughes, but I think Steve Martin, I think of Steve Martin as a, as a premier storyteller, as, as do I feel the same way about John Candy. They were, I feel like they were really listening to each other and the movie as it was being made and pivoting in beautiful ways. And uh, I, the movie, I just, I watch it probably two or three times a year and it's, yeah. it's one of my favorites of all yeah. time. All right, let's watch it uh, now. We'll talk more afterwards. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, thanks very much. Here's the film. From Paramount in 1987, written and directed by John Hughes, Steve Martin, John Candy, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Back here with uh, Ryan Reynolds, our guest programmer tonight, picked uh, two films. So the one you just saw, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. We'll have a gross point blank coming up in a bit. Ryan's new film, Deadpool and Wolverine, out soon. Thanks very much for coming on TCM. I know the channel's important to you, and it means a lot to have actors of your magnitude it's an, coming on. It's an honor. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Blaine's Trains and Automobiles, which is a movie you say you, you watch at least a couple times a year. Yeah. Um, you know, that it, it is noteworthy that John Hughes chose as the last shot of that film is, is just candy. And his face is saying, I'm very happy to be here, and I love that you and your wife love each other, and God, I miss my wife. It doesn't feel like a moment of envy. He's happy for Steve Martin in that moment to have that thing that he's lost. Yeah, I'd be remiss if the words Edie McClurg didn't come up in some discussion yes. of planes, trains, automobiles. I mean, come on, so one she, of the all-timers. That's right, I mean, she's in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, mm -hmm. so memorably uh, for John Hughes, yep. she's the principal secretary. But here she's the rental car agent after, uh, after he there's no there's no v5 there's no car there yes right? one of the great uh, uh, right. speeches right but also a test even clerk's testament to you know the, how powerful you can be listening in a scene and listening to steve martin just go on this profanity laced tirade for her i always think about that moment too is like a so one of my favorite scenes probably my favorite scene is in the motel room between steve and, and john candy but one of my favorite scenes is that one because you think wow you guys burned the r rating yeah, for one. For this scene. You know, and, and how long that scene is? It's 90 seconds. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I mean, less than two minutes. It's but in, so, a, in, so, in this yeah. era, there is almost no studio on earth that would say, no, 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 we're not, we're not going rated R, so you can have this one fucking scene. That's right. With a That's fucking right. car, with this fucking woman. He says it 18 times, and then she oh. has the capper. May I see your rental agreement? I threw it away. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, what? You're fast. I mean, just one of the <laughs> all time. I mean, talk about, you know, a nerve wracking, too. Imagine that day going into work and you're thinking like, oh, my God, like, I just have to hit this one note right perfectly. perfectly. And, uh, and boy, boy, does she ever. And her stuff at the beginning, uh, ad lib. Yeah. Just start talking. So she just started talking yeah. about Thanksgiving. It's so funny. It sets it up perfectly. So so much of when I was writing on Deadpool and Wolverine, so much of Planes, Trains is uh, play, uh, so Planes, Trains influences so much of that that writing. And one, in particular, there's a scene with Steve Martin and John Candy in the in the motel after you know uh, uh, Candy hands over his Casio uh, watch <laughs> to get to get a room for the night. And and um, there's a moment where obviously where, where Steve Martin goes on a complete just you know absolutely. Uh, uh, gives John Candy a full strip down and just you know rips him in this sequence and it's and it is harsh it is funny as hell so it's a real tight rope walk but it's also harsh and there's a moment that I find very inspiring which is that you can see this ever so slight flick of regret that clicks across Steve's eyes because right, Steve as, is a beautiful as actor as he's doing it yeah yeah you see John Candy all of that humanity and that pain what he's really actually going through in that moment, that loneliness that just yeah. can't really be filled by anything other than someone like Neil Page. I find it incredibly inspiring. And there's a moment in Deadpool and Wolverine that is so slightly, uh, I think people will catch, is very reminiscent of that. And a moment that I, I think is, uh, if I'm the John Candy character in Deadpool and Wolverine, it would be, Hugh would be the Steve Martin character. And Hugh is a uh... huge asshole, yes. 
sorry, where were you going with that? You were going somewhere I was else. Uh, Hugh Jackman. He's a, he's uh, another, yeah, he's Hugh another, Jackman. He's yeah. another, he's yes. another, yes. he's another Hugh uh, Jackman, Hugh actor. Laurie, Hugh Grant, they're all yeah, in it. They're all. Um, <laughs> we got the Hughes to get to the movie's huge. You mind putting your mask back on? It's super hard to eat while I'm wearing it. It's super hard to eat when you're not. Yeah, Hugh is phenomenal. Just obviously a Swiss army knife type of actor who can do so many things. One of which I love seeing is when Hugh is uh, vulnerable. Yeah. No, so it's uh, you and Hugh Jackman in, uh, in uh, Deadpool and Wolverine uh, uh, coming soon. Yes, sir. Uh, Ryan, thanks very much. Thank uh, you. But don't go away because uh, Ryan's got another film to talk about. He'll have uh, John Cusack in Gross Point Blank. Uh, that's next on TCM. Next on TCM, Gross Point Blank, then Red Light. And later, the French lieutenant's woman. Rendezvous with TCM tonight.